Hey guys, it's Trail. Uh, this is going to be the second video in our series that we are lovingly titling uh, Trail Needs an Elk Tag. Uh, I did not have any luck in the draws this year. I was not able to pick up an over-the-counter permit in Idaho. So I'm still looking for an elk hunting opportunity for this coming fall. Uh, and I'm not going to stay home. I absolutely love to hunt elk. Uh, I love to bow hunt elk. And I say it again and again, but you only get so many Septembers in your lifetime, so I'm not going to stay home. I'm going to find an elk tag and go hunting. Uh, the first video that we did in this series, I touched on using the Insider Research platform, including Filtering 2.0, uh, to really narrow down and find uh, some potential units that I might be interested in buying a tag and hunting. Uh, I covered things like application strategy articles, which can be really helpful in determining the populations, bull cow ratios, and then also we just give you the information that you need on how to buy a permit, including the dates that those go on sale, the costs, and how that entire process works. Uh, pretty much everything that you would need, just like me, I'm using the same platform. I work here at Go Hunt, but I use this platform all the time, and I use it for the same reason that you would, is, which is to, to get an elk tag and go hunting. So the second video, we're going to dive into maps and how I use Go Hunt Maps to filter down and find a specific unit, and even more so to find an area within that unit that I think would be a good opportunity to go hunting. Uh, I'm primarily an archery elk hunter, uh, but like I said, Colorado does offer second and third rifle seasons. And within your Go Hunt Maps, there's different tools, layers that you can use that are more conducive to scouting and finding a spot to hunt for those later seasons. So I'm going to touch on that. I'm just going to dive in and show you how I use Go Hunt Maps. Uh, so I'm going to jump in. You can see I've got the state of Colorado already pulled up on the left side of the page here. I've got the various layers. Typically one of the very first layers that I pull in is the private land, public land layers. So for me, I'm not so concerned with the individual landowners of private land, but I do want to look at the government land. So land that I can hunt with, you know, DIY public land. So I'm going to click on the government land layer. Uh, I'm going to click on government land. So as I open that up, I do have the opportunity to adjust the opacity so I can see through those and kind of see the landscape, but it does give me a good idea of where the public land is. My primary method of hunting is backpack hunting. I do like to move with the elk herds. I do like to live on the land off my back while I'm out elk hunting. So I do like to include the wilderness layer. So I'm going to click on that. Uh, one of the next layers I add is the hunt units. Again, that can either be the first or second. It doesn't really matter, but that is a unit, uh, a layer that I have to include pretty quick. And again, I can adjust that opacity if I want to. Uh, scrolling down, there's things like access, land usage, species distri distribution. Uh, I don't get too deep into those until later in my research process. I would say probably the next layer that I often go to are the wildfire layers. Uh, wildfires are magnets for elk and the regenerated vegetation that comes back after a wildfire it's like an ice cream shop for elk so that's something that I want to look at pretty quick in my research process the cool thing about go hunt maps is that I can highlight the individual fire by year so if I only want to look at fires for the last five years I can do that uh, as a burn progresses, it gets less productive over time, so I may not be as interested in a fire that burned in 2010 as I am in one that burned in 2020 or 2019. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight maybe the last six, seven years of, high, of uh, fires. I'm just going to go ahead and drop those in. One of the next layers that I like to go to is species distribution. So for the states that have them, like Colorado, this is a really nice tool. As you click on that species distribution, I can scroll down and I can see things that are going to be applicable to me in my hunt, specifically archery elk hunting. So I know that archery elk hunt, it opens the first part of September, it runs through the end of September. So for me, I want to look at things like elk summer range. Uh, I want to look at summer concentration areas. I also uh, want to maybe toggle back and forth and look between uh, winter concentration areas. And then I also might want to add migration patterns or migration corridors. Uh, by overlaying summer concentration areas and elk winter range along with those corridors, I can really put together the picture of where the elk are primarily living in the summer, where they're transitioning to, and where they're going to winter. 
So those can be really good indications to you on where you're likely to find elk. And again, like I said, if you're hunting a late season rifle hunt, those winter ranges are going to be more important as well as those migration corridors and those migration routes. Uh, those are really probably the first layers that I add later on in the process after I've found an area that I like to hunt or I might want to hunt. I'm going to start drilling down into some of the other layers uh, that are going to help me actually get in and hunt that area. A couple of those layers that I would touch on, uh, roads and trails. Initially, I don't worry too much about roads and trails. I'm more worried about finding elk and finding elk habitat. Uh, if the elk are 10 miles deep into a wilderness area, uh, for me, great. I would love to go in there and hunt elk. And I'm not as concerned about roads and trails and maybe how to access that initially as I am about just finding elk, finding an area to hunt. I'll figure that out, how to get in there after the fact. Uh, another tool that I like to use, and I've got them over here on this portion of the page, is the train analysis and then also the historical imagery. Uh, those two are really important in that you can drill down into the individual units that you might be interested in hunting. The terrain analysis tool is really important to me as an archery elk hunter because I know that bedding, cover, and also uh, feed are important. I know that during those early season hot time frames of the year, uh, those elk are going to be searching out north, northeast facing slopes where the timber is pretty thick for bedding cover. Uh, I can also use those to highlight flats that I can use for camping, or I can also evaluate a landscape for what an elk might like to bed in because an elk likes a flat. He likes a ridge. He likes to be comfortable. It also offers him the ability to see more country around him. It's also better for a herd. So as you move into September, you've got elk and maybe, or a bull, and he might have 20 or 30 cows. That's a pretty large area. Um, they need some space, they need some flats, they need some bedding areas to bed in. And this terrain analysis tool is really handy in that it allows me to evaluate the landscape. Uh, if I click on it, I'm going to kind of run you through it real quick. You're going to see it opens up here. Uh, I can click on slope. Again, I know that elk typically like 15 to 30 degree slopes. You get above and beyond 40 degrees, it's highly unlikely that an elk is going to spend much time in that country. It's just too steep. Uh, that zero to five range, like I said, is really important. So I can highlight just the areas that I'm interested in, and those are going to show up on the map. So I'm going to eliminate the ones that I'm not interested in. Like I said, I can also highlight the aspect. So I want to look at the flats. I want to look at the north, northeast. And you can see pretty quick as I drill down in the landscape, it's going to highlight those areas that I'm interested in that are probably the most applicable for bedding areas. Uh, I also know elk need feed, so I'm starting to evaluate the landscape for feed and also for water. So like I was saying, you can use that train analysis tool to help you depending on the hunt you're going on, whether that's a early season archery hunt or late season hunt. Uh, one of the next tools that I like to jump in and use is historical imagery. And this is a relatively new feature for us here at Go Hunt. And essentially what it allows you to do is to look at the aerial imagery of the landscape at different time frames throughout the year or years. And I use that in a lot of ways to uh, help me find feed. So if I'm looking at an area, I can actually, in most cases, look at an aerial imagery of the time frame that I'll actually be out on the ground hunting. So if it's a September tag, I can often find a image that's from September and I can cruise across the landscape and really evaluate it for the feed conditions. I can find those pockets where the feed is good, where it looks green and lush. I can typically find water sources. So it's a great uh, tool to look at wallows or ponds to see if they have water in them from year to year. I can cross compare that between the precip that the uh, area is having. I can look at that data and I can reference back against the historical imagery to see what areas are likely to have water, what areas are likely to have good feed. So I use that historical imagery quite a bit and those are probably the two best use case scenarios for me as an elk hunter uh, are water and then also feed conditions. Uh, there are people that like to look at the landscape for fires. So between a year where a burn happened versus a year post burn or prior to the burn, and they can get an idea of like how much jack straw there might be. Uh, you can look at areas that are beetle killed areas to kind of see how much deadfall is coming down from year to year. 
you get into some of these areas, the jack straw uh, logs that come down either after fire or due to beetle kill can be really, really tough to navigate. Uh, not necessarily that there's not elk in there because a lot of cases there are because they can find some solitude in those areas, but it can be tough to navigate. Sometimes you do want to look at the landscape in regards to how easy or difficult an area might be to navigate through. So those are kind of the steps that I take to evaluate a landscape and pick an area, pick a unit, uh, and even specifically pick areas within the unit that I land on to help me know where to go and, and give me a starting point to go hunting. Uh, just to wrap it all up uh, in a bow and a nice pretty package, uh, I'm going to revisit the steps that I take. Uh, first being the hunt units, so you want to lay that hunt unit boundary. Next being government land, I like to know where the public land is that I can hunt. Uh, next step for me would be wildfires, so I definitely want to know where those are. And like I said, it's important for you to know year by year. Uh, and I look at those, definitely you should look up fire layers in regards to elk because the feed is going to be better. Uh, third, I like to look at the species distribution layers. So if there's summer concentration areas, if there's winter concentration areas, if there are corridors or migration patterns that are available to you within these layers, I definitely like to look at those. In a lot of ways, it's gonna tell you where the elk are on the unit on any given time of the year. Uh, beyond that, uh, roads and trails, that's kind of the later steps for me. Uh, like I said, I'm more interested in finding elk and finding good elk habitat and then figuring out how to get in that. That's kind of a later step for me. Uh, part of finding elk, finding elk habitat, I do like to use the historical imagery and I use that primarily to find feed and water. And then I do use the terrain analysis tool. Like I said, for archery elk hunting early season when the weather's hot, elk have to bed. They have to use those north, northeast facing shady slopes. They need the shade to conserve body heat. Uh, so I definitely use that terrain analysis tool, both the slope, the aspect, and then also the degree of the slope to find elk areas that'll probably have a concentration of elk. These are the same tools I'm encouraging you to use that I am using, and I'm using them in the exact same way. So like I said, this is a two-part series. The first we covered how to find an area, how to find the opportunities to get a tag and go hunting. This is moving into that maps portion and really starting to pick apart the landscape, finding a specific unit, and then finding specific areas within that unit that I can focus in on and start to put together my actual hunt plan. So we have memberships for both the Insider platform, which covers the research portion, the draw odds, the filtering 2.0, and go hunt maps. We also have a membership that is just Go Hunt Maps. So you can get whichever one suits you best. Uh, in my opinion, Go Hunt Insider, it's the best value, the best bang for your buck. You get all that research plus the maps, plus points back in the Go Hunt gear shop. But essentially everything that you need to plan and go on an elk hunt, just as I'm using it right now myself, is available to you in your membership. So check that out. Uh, if you got questions, drop them in the comments below. Uh, there's no reason to stay home this September or this fall at all. Get an elk tag and go elk hunting.